I got one on me too. Fish on top water time, eat it, eat doubling it. up oh. right when we get out here. I think I might have a trout. A trout. out. You lost yours? Yeah, mine. Uh, mine never got connected. That's it was a nice one there on the Moonwalker. So this is guaranteed way. We're gonna call it guaranteed because it's worked 100% of the time for us to catch trout and probably a lot of lady fish, depending on where you are, with a topwater lure. Yep. So Luke, it's, talk about what we be doing here. Yeah, so it's topwater time. We're uh, you know, we're getting toward the warmer months. Topwater time. This is it. Whoa. And we're using, right now we're using moonwalkers. You see that? That's why you don't use treble hooks. <laughs> Shoo, quick release. Yeah, so topwater time, and um, and it's, we've had a lot of people, because we're posting a lot of pictures, topwater's just fun. It's flat out fun, and the cool, oh, I got one following me. Oh, look at that out there. The cool Can thing, you get on that jaw? Cool thing about it. Look at that, that activity. That might be ladyfish there. That's still so much fun, though. I'm gonna go right behind. There we are, got him. Got something. So the cool thing about it is just it's just a lot of fun in the in the summertime, especially early morning like this. Top water not only is a lot of fun, it's it's often the the best the best way to go out there and catch a bunch of fish because it's noise it's noisy, oh. right? These fish are, are going to oh. be more aggressive. Oh, it's so cool! Now's their time to feed. Oh, Ooh, look it's, at that. it's a shark! It's, it's a, a shark, shark coming up behind it. Look look at that wave. Let's see if it eats it. It's probably chasing that lead. Oh, it's, it's coming! Oh oh my gosh! Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, it's still on it. That's a, that's a black tip. That's like a legit size. Oh, oh, oh my oh, gosh. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Did you see that? That was awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. That was like a four or five foot shark. <laughs> oh, it almost nailed it. And all of a sudden it saw the boat. Yeah, it's oh. that shark. For those listening, there was a legit size shark oh. and it was it was following. It was like a big submarine. The fin was coming out of the water. That was nuts. That was pretty cool. All of a sudden I had a bunch of little small fish hitting it and they just stopped. And then all of a sudden you see this wake coming up behind. Woo, yeah, that was so, so cool. So the, the best news is this is all, the sun just came up. We're doing all this before work. So we could be done. We're probably gonna stay a little bit longer and get some cool drone footage for our insider members, but we could be back to the ramp and home and cleaned up before 8.30ish, um, which is pretty awesome. And so the key is getting out early, right, Luke? Yeah. And that's so, where every time we've done this, it's worked 100% of the time when we're out here basically I mean, you can see over here, Joel, sun is kind of starting to come up. Uh, this is just prime time. We find some birds. So this area had a couple of birds. We scared them off. But you find some birds, hit this edge of a flat. Yeah, base just, oh, I just had oh. one. Base just get out. Oh, there we go. At least that's a decent sized trout. Come Oops, on. So eat it. Be a good brother and go right. Oh, no, there we are. Got him. <laughs> and usually once you find them in one depth, Keep casting in that depth. That's the cool part about these Moonwalker topwater lures. You can cover some serious ground. They'll cast a country mile. Yeah, the, this is a power fishing lure. You can cover, as I mentioned, cover water. So we started out in the deeper water. It was a bunch of ladyfish, and we just slowly started pushing in. Not right now, we're in about two and a half feet of water. Now we're starting to get into some kind of medium, small size trout. And as we push a little bit, a little bit shallower, Usually that's where the bigger trout are going to be. So we're just going to kind of move our way up while also having a good old time. Let's get this puppy off. That's a nice one. Yeah, we're using the old moonwalker, especially when you get out here before the sun is up. You do not want to have treble hooks. I don't like treble hooks to begin with. Luke, can you imagine using treble hooks at when there's no light out? Yeah, that's oh, risky. I'd rather drink poison. That's horrible. Risky move. Super risky. There we are. And that was a big reason we went with these super heavy duty hooks on the Moonwalker Topwater Lure. If you guys haven't tried it, uh, you should. Definitely my uh, favorite topwater and the, from the reviews that are coming in, seems to be every, oh, that's a nice one. Oh, lady uh, fish. Lady. <laughs> Look at that thing jumping. Yeah, so what we're doing is this is a, a kind of a medium tide and uh, we're right on the edge of this big grass flat. And so the lady fish are holding off the edge of the flat the, the smaller trout are holding right on the edge. And most of the action is gonna be right on the edge. That's where the shark was. Ooh, there we go, quick release. And, uh, and then as we push up close to the shore, then we'll start getting oh, more into bigger trout. Birds coming by, we'll make sure not to hook one. We'll be getting more into the bigger trout and, uh, and snook and redfish. And the cool thing about these lures, like have a good top water lure, everything will eat it. As long as it's feeding on bait fish around the you know four to five inch range, It'll come up and pop it. Whole lot of fun. It really is. 
Just like to, I said, you do this early and just find the birds, find ooh. some bait. Ooh, look at a nice hit there. You're usually, gonna catch fish. Usually when they hit it once, that trout is probably still following line. Let's see if we can get him to eat it. We'll go there in that same depth. Oh. oh yeah, he was following it. There's a wolf swirl right there. Yeah, and so for trout especially, um, one benefit, I'll call it a benefit, of inline hooks is that they actually do a good job on not hooking the smaller fish while having a good job of hooking the bigger ones. And so a lot of these smaller fish, right now we're in the kind of medium to small trout territory, there's gonna be a lot of strikes and misses where um, they'll come up, pop it, and, uh, and all, if it's a trout especially, they'll almost always keep following. If they, if they miss, they actually get like super mad, they're an aggressive fish, and they will keep following. But sometimes 15, 20 feet, They'll keep following, usually they hit multiple times. And so if you want to catch them, you can just kind of slow it down and-, and uh, Yeah, do you, like, do you like to do a complete pause ever when that happens? Absolutely. Yeah, you just want to look like an injured bait fish. So do a normal do a normal routine. And then when you know there's one behind there and they're struggling to suck it down to eat it, just pause it or sometimes even do a straight reel um, where that way they, they can't miss. It's not going side to side and they'll come up and just smack it. Yeah, because trout, if you watch them you know, feed and they have that tooth or tooth is as my son jackson like to say and they go up there and try to nail this thing to to injure it so it's easier to uh to to inhale the sucker and so many times if it, oop, there we go i just got a hit that's a all lady fish out there yeah, going like, crazy like over lady fish uh, but a lot of times if you do get hit that trout's saying oh man i did nail it and if you do a quick little pause they're like oh easy meal and they will come up and nail it i found with redfish though you do that sometimes they get kind of get spooked like if you do that absolute stop uh, sometimes yeah they, they'll hit it as well you just never know everyone's a little bit different i've just found with trout it works better to do that yeah trout kind of, are trout are way more aggressive kind of pause and trout are basically designed to hit up on the surface whereas redfish aren't. So trout, literally that's, they're designed to strike from below. Whereas redfish have, you know, the, oh, that's a decent size, like yeah. you strike. Redfish, you know, obviously their mouth, just looking at their mouth, they're designed to eat off the bottom. So that's just not technically natural for them to hit stop water. So they just, they just won't hit as, as often. A snooker like trout too. They'll, uh, they're super aggressive. If they miss once, they'll likely come up and smack it again. And, and when they do, it's with a vengeance. Oh yeah. Usually that second strike is when it happens. Oh, so there's some bait up there. So you're also looking for little dimples. Still, well, can't really see it now, Joel. Maybe you can. Right behind my uh, my lure, there's some bait up there. Another good sign when you actually see the bait. But yeah. the big thing, as we mentioned before, is the best time for this to be working is as the sun is coming up. Now you get to enjoy a, uh, a nice... Now it's tri trout bite or even trout snook redfish bite and you get to see a pretty awesome sunrise as well. That's pretty- uh, Yeah, look at that. Oh, that is so cool. Good way to start the day off right there. Don't, don't burn your retina there, Joel. <laughs> you good? All right, I forgot my sunglasses too, which is the other benefit. Oh, is, that's a shame. Yeah. It's nice, you're not sweating out here. You don't have to put sunscreen on. So, it is just nice. So the big question, we're about a mile from the ramp. Should we go back to Joe's truck and get the glasses? My vote is no, because uh, I brought mine. Joel, you brought your sunglasses? Yep. Oh, so. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> One time Joe and I both forgot ours, and then we did go back. But. So now it's a little bit deeper. Let's talk about depth. Uh, we just got a little bit deeper. We're not getting the strikes. We just got off the grass. So yeah, it's usually the, the most fish are gonna be around the most structure and we got a, a little section without grass and we stopped getting the bites. I'm gonna go back this way towards the... So now we're getting back on the grass. Towards the sun. No, no, we're uh, we've also had some questions about these single inline hooks. These, um, these are really expensive uh, hooks. They are the beefiest, toughest, inline hooks that we could find literally in the world and um they ain't cheap like we have to buy them you know twenty thousand or so at a time um otherwise it, it, we just couldn't even uh, afford it i mean these same hooks um if you just bought two of them retail can go as high as nine dollars in america right now just to put it in perspective but we are working on getting bulk has that happened yet luke to uh, do some individually? It's, it's on, it's on the path that we still got a ways to go, but we're getting there. So yeah, we'll start, we'll start just selling them individually as, and we'll do packs of, uh, either four or six 
somewhere in that range. Just trying to make sure the math all works. And with our little scissors with that split ring nose, quickly take them off in terms of taking off old troubles or whatever you have on there. Yeah, this looks, they're, yeah, they're strong, they're sharp. They, uh, they're strong enough like that. If that, I'm kind of glad that shark didn't hit because it definitely would not have straightened the hook and we'd had him been unhooking that thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any big pliers got, on me. Um, got a weed on mine. Yeah, they've been very impressive. And speaking of weeds, you get less of this kind of stuff with a single versus treble hooks. Absolutely. And doggone, especially like right when we were hitting the ramp, I mean, it was still dark out. I can't imagine using treble hooks. Yeah, lure glides a little bit better too. It's easier to do to walk the dog. I just, I, I feel like, yeah, I do it rod tip up, rod tip down, doesn't matter. It's gliding. I feel like as soon as I started actually using them, I thought I was like, oh man, I'm gonna be missing all these fish. And then once I actually gave them a try, if, if, talking about just going to inlines, uh, I've been really impressed. So now I'm at the point where I don't use trebles for anything. I don't got no time for that. Just saw some uh, some bait shoot out of the water about 100 yards up. Oh yeah, there's bait up there. We'll go towards and that. And you can bomb this thing. The Moonwalker. All right. Um, just got the final version, I believe, of the rod that we've been working on for like two years with Mud Hole. Luke? Yep, using it right now. Oh, it yeah. Is, it is nice. Oh, it is, it is so, so nice. Uh, as soon as you feel it, it feels like, you know, a $400 G Loomis type of a, of a rod. And it's because it is. Uh, it's not G Loomis, but it's similar in terms of the components and the and, and how it would be priced of course our members uh we're talking about doing what like a hundred dollars off luke mm -hmm. yeah it'll be a hundred dollars um, off for members just to make it just to make it something big's going something maybe a school of reds or something where people would be crazy not to join if the membership I, it is going to go up when we have all the smart fishing spot stuff uh all finished but we want it to be where someone can say, you know what, if I just buy one rod, I'm gonna save $100, which is at least currently now the cost of the membership. It's awesome. Making an offer so good, you almost feel dumb for saying no to it. Because we're kind of like Costco. If you guys don't know the whole you know, business model of Costco, Costco does not make any money in their stores after it's all said and done with, ooh, a nice hit there. Ooh. Yes, and it's out oh, there. That, was a, that was a trout. Oh, there's two things on it. Something's going on ahead of us. I think it was just mullet. Oh man, that was a trout Oop. following me all the way up there. But anyhow, um, for those of you who don't know, Costco doesn't really make any money if you look at their financials in the stores. Their money is the membership. That's that's where they have their profit. Ironically, their profit is their, uh, what you got there, Luke? It's following a little pot of bait fish and oh, I'm on double up. trout around. Oh, I just oh. missed a trout. It's so the same with us. We're not in the business of making a bunch of profit, which is why we were able to give $100 off on a rod, is we're in the membership business. We want to have as many happy members who keep renewing year after year after year. So one thing, just when unhooking trout with a, really any fish with a topwater plug, trout are kind of the, the, uh, the riskiest because they're just really slippery and they'll go from being like this to going totally crazy for a while is just try to make sure to keep your hands away from the hooks, right? So right now, if it starts going crazy, I have one hand below the trout and I'm holding the line firmly so my bottom hand can't get hooked and it's not gonna be able to shoot up and so my top hand can't get hooked. Then grab the trout, you're gonna get a nice firm grip. Pliers would be preferred. Let's see if I have mine handy. Oh, they're not in my normal spot. I've got some there, Luke. Good to have pliers in a normal spot. I don't know where my pliers are. So now we'll go unhook this guy. There we are, hooks out, let the trout go, back in, oh, get on there buddies. There we are. And now back in action. So yeah, just key thing is, I've seen people where they just grab the fish and then the lure's kind of holding around and they don't have a firm grip and then that, as soon as that trout starts going and if your hand isn't holding the lure up, now the trout is sliding down your hand and now you have a hook in your hand. I've, I've seen most people get hooked uh, while unhooking trout because they're so slippery and they, uh, they start just freaking out 
without without any warning. So just be careful. Make sure to always have your, your hands protected. So Joel, check out this bait here. Do you see these little dimples? I'll, I'll cast up there. Maybe we'll kind of spook them. You can, well, didn't spook them like I wanted. Maybe we'll pull up a fish out of it though. Uh, oh, ooh, yeah, do you see that thing pop? Uh, oh, it's so cool. Oh, I just uh, got just on. Snagged it. We give it a nice little shake. Sometimes it shakes off. That would be awesome, it came up and smacked it. Yeah, it's got some, there's some floating weeds. Sometimes that uh, that does happen, and that's another reason. You're gonna be happy you got single end lines on this moonwalker. Yeah, you can still catch some weeds with any kind of hook or a jig head, but doggone with troubles. You're almost guaranteed to catch all those weeds. Yeah, and in areas like this with seagrass, in the morning time is when the least amount of grass is on the water. That's another reason why topwater is just good in the in the morning hours. If you try it later on the day and the, or the evening, a lot of the grass with the with the heat they actually rise to the surface, and so it can be pretty frustrating. Even with inline hooks, we're in a little grassy patch right now. Even these inline hooks are snagging it. So I just did it there. I just as Luke was mentioning earlier, just do a quick little pop, and that does create some commotion and a lot of times the grass will actually pop off, which is what uh, what happened there. All right, I'm gonna go back over this way. Just It'll pop off most of the time with singles. Sun is coming up. All right. Yeah, so uh, talk about this rod in terms of the balance. That was a, a big thing and it's probably one of the most overlooked things that most anglers don't understand, right? It's almost like an afterthought when someone's buying a rod, like, oh, I got my reel first, which there's no problem. Everyone should be proud of the reels. Um, but the rod is an afterthought for so many people, and that should be one of the first things you're thinking about. And if not, it should be one of the first things after you have a reel, you should be thinking about to pair it up where it's balanced. And, and if you've ever used someone who has a balanced rod and reel, you can tell a difference. I mean, Luke is good about it and people use his stuff for like, man, this feels so good. Um, so talk about that, Luke, on, on, on how mud, I mean, that's something that Mudhole specializes in with their custom rods is if someone comes in there to build a rod, they're like, all right, tell us what reel you're gonna use with it. And they actually build that rod around the reel so it's perfectly balanced. Yeah, and, and it's even getting a custom rod, if whoever's building the rod doesn't ask what reel it is and doesn't make a point to know exactly what reel's being used, probably I wouldn't buy from them because a custom rod, the, the benefit of a custom rod is that it's basically paired exactly with the reel that you're going to be using in the form of, of where, the, uh, where the guides are. Um, we'll, I'll show this, like where these, where these guides are, like where the, these first three guides, it need, they need to be placed based on exact, uh, the exact reel, on how far out it is away from the rod, and then the angle that is pointing back up toward the rod. That's a big thing, it, it definitely helps with casting distance, so that's number one. And then uh, number two is the actual balance itself. So most rods, especially high-end rods, it's all about just decreasing the weight. Um, and so the manufacturer is just trying to decrease the weight everywhere, and, uh, and a lot of the weight can be taken out of the butt. And, uh, and that's actually a problem in many cases because that'll take the rod way out of balance. Let me get this cast out here. So, so now for this one, right? Like this is basically balanced. This is a lightweight reel. This is a, a BGMQ and the balance point is basically like right where my hand is. And that's a good thing, right? That just helps just have the, uh, the rod in equilibrium. So we actually purposely put a little bit of weight down here in the butt to help make sure we that- We like big butts, we cannot lie. Yeah, so we put some, uh, purposely put some, a little bit out of weight, not a lot, but, uh, but enough to just make the rod more in balance. A lot of these high-end rods, yes, they're nice. That, but it, oh, God, yeah, Pelican, Pelican diving right. Dove right there. But yes, they are very nice, but, uh, but again, just the, the balance is a little bit tip heavy because again, all that weight was taken out of the butt. Now the tip is gonna be heavier uh, relative to the butt. And, uh, and again, for topwater, if you're using a lure where you're doing a, a, a tip down retrieve like we're doing now, that's actually, that's actually not a bad thing, right? But, but just for all purpose, it's good to have a balanced rod if you can. So yeah, we're a little bit different, right? Most, we're not a typical rod company. So we're designing this rod for the reels that we sell most often. And that's, gonna, that's these Daiwa reels. Uh, we've had, we've been loving them, like the Fuego, like Fuego and the, and the, and the, the BGMQ. BGMQ, right? And ballistic so, too. I mean, if you're in uh, the higher end ones. 
so these are lightweight reels, you know, around plus or minus eight ounces. That's lighter than most reels. Most rods are not designed for reels that light. And so this will be the best balanced rod for these, you know, these higher end reels that are built to, to be super light. So that is, that is the, the kind of a, a core difference between ours and, and the others. Yeah, if you haven't tried, tried the Fuego, the BGMQ, get one of each. Um, I got a little, yeah, the, man, this Fuego is like three years old, used and abused, and it's still smooth. It's crazy. And those BGMQs, that's the next level, and you're going to pay more for them. But, uh, man, those things are solid. The only thing I've ever heard negative about the Fuego, I mean, come, it's the lowest price to have the mag seal. And uh, we've had a couple of these Fuegos over the years have made it in the water, uh, not on purpose, but by accident, and still work like new, even a year or two later. But the only negative is the whole, you know, flex thing uh, on fighting a really big fish. Um, I, I mean, I, I can kind of, oh, I just got a nice pop there. I can kind of understand it's certainly not something you're going to use. Oh, we're almost getting doubled up, Luke. Yep. Small little fish. I can certainly, it's not going to something you're going to use like an a pier jetty trying to go after mondo fish and current. Um, but for just overall flats fishing like this for trout and reds and snook, uh, it's an amazing reel. And I mean, what a, what a value reel. Yeah, it's, it's a finesse reel. It's not for using 30 pound braid and, and pulling out big snook away from dock pilings. Still you can, know, but I would take no, a BGMQ over that. Yeah, because it's, it's just not designed for that. It has, yes, it does have strong drag, but it's, it's more for like 10 pound braid. Ooh, ooh what was that? You're getting slammed got, right there. Something. We're in a little honey hole here. I'm gonna cast over there, something eating big. And, uh, and yeah, they're, they're not Otis proof. I just had one bite to dust. I've had a, this Fuego for probably three plus years. The thing I've just uh, totally abused it. Been in good shape and then bring Otis out on the boat. He got too excited. He was running from one side of the boat to the other and clipped the reel while I was in the rod holder, you know, the reel was sitting out from the console to boat and goodbye reel. So what happened to it? It's not Otis proof. He broke the hand, what did he do? He broke the, 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 the bail? Be, yeah, because this section of the reel, this, it's not a metal, it's, it's, it's so light because it's, it's made from a composite, like, like most light reels. And so Otis clipped, the rod was in the rod holder. Otis, Snap. a hundred pound dog running full speed, his shoulder clipped the reel and it uh -huh. just totally broke right there in the arm. A metal reel, oh, oh. A metal reel would not have done that. Hey, another reason to have it in line. Look at that. It came out like that. So a metal reel would uh, would have been fine, whereas the composite, again, whether it's the, the Fuego or any composite reel, basically anything other, anything under eight ounces is going to be made from a composite. Like no metals can, uh, can be that, at least none that I've seen. So that's just a risk of going light. Can't have a hundred pound dog running around the boat. That's a risk for anything for that matter. Yeah. Oh, Otis. They yeah, got a BGMQ right next to it, and that uh, that held strong. Oh, he hit both of them? Or I don't, I don't know if he hit both or not, but he definitely <laughs> hit the Fuego. Oh, Otis. I was, I was busy fighting fish. <laughs> oh, Otis. Yeah, so, um, so let's talk about uh, Power Prawn, too. What about Junior's it? Junior's out. You've been yeah. crushing it. You went out last night at uh, hitting the bridges and stuff. That's what I love about how versatile it is. Everyone's like, oh, man, what about the voodoo and all this? Yeah, those are decent, but they're not versatile. I mean, most of them come pre-rigged. Even the, you know, most of the DOA shrimp come pre-rigged. That means if it's got a pre-rigged hook or a jig head in it, you're only fishing it one way. You only have one depth that you can really maximize that sucker. Yep. And uh, Luke has been going out there and crushing it at night. Big snook. Probably get some tarpon here soon too. Mm -hmm. um, just fishing the docks at night because you can put any kind of jig head or weedless hook you can imagine. Well, we're working on some weedless jig heads. That's right. I've uh, been testing those suckers out. Hope to have them at fishstrong.com. That's our online tackle store pretty soon. Yeah, we have the design now made for the weedless. So I've been going out at night fishing bridges. It's just enough, it's just fun. And it's it's uh, as long as the weather's not crazy, it's just relaxing. Like not many people are out there. The fish are fired up, it's, which is a great combination. And so I've been using the power prawns with this weedless jig head. It's a basically a football shaped jig on a worm Ooh. hook. And, uh, and I've literally 
literally like taking it right up against the pilings, like basically bouncing it around the pilings. Those snook are just posted up right in the, uh, right in the fenders and just taking that power prong right along it, right? Whereas like a bucktail or anything else would have been snagged in like the first cast. Ooh. And it's going, it'll base, I can feel it going around the piling and then I feel that thump. And so it's been really, really impressive using a, a weedless, it's almost like bass fishing for big snook. But I've been catching grouper doing it. Whoa, uh, cobia. Yeah, there's some fish right here. I've uh, jumped, jumped to tarpon. Obviously jacks, tons of ladyfish, bluefish. Caught a sheep's head last night, as well as a, a nice uh, slot snook. Caught a big sheep's head on it? Yeah. That's cool. And uh, yeah, just a lot of fun. And had a couple other things that I'm not sure what it was. Had one, one decent sized fish get, uh, get stolen by a dolphin. Really? Still upset about that. Stinking dolphin. Didn't see what it, it looks was. looks so cute and cuddly. Oh, oh, oh they there steal we are. your fish. Oh, that's a lady fish, I think. It's going crazy. <laughs> you can also use these lady fish for, uh, for cut bait. Yeah, and so for this type of fishing, you've probably noticed, you know, we had a really strong bite early on. Now it's died off. That's pretty common, right? The sun's coming up. The bite's gonna start, the top oh, of our bite's you... gonna start slowing down. I snagged a lady fish. I like to get away. Someone's got a top water on like that. Yeah. Is it will ricochet sometimes? I don't know about that one. That's in his belly. Yeah, top water bite slowing man, down. Just be so careful with top water when you got a fish coming up to the boat. And, uh, and on, on really calm days like this too, top water is not the best. Like I like to have a nice little wind ripple like we have here, but by the time we get the wind ripple, we're kind of getting taken off the flat, which is ladyfish country. We'll get this guy off. All right. And here come the rest of the boats. So you get there early. So we could be done right now. And it's seven o'clock on the dot. So we could, the ramp's right there where those boats are coming out. We could be back at 7.15. You can be home and like I said, completely change, boat clean, everything ready. Back to work by 8.30 or so. So we're not personally, cause we got a little work to do, but different yeah. type of work. And, um, and for, for many years, I live pretty close to the, to the uh, water. Like when I was in Tampa, you know, I wasn't on the water, but you know, I live pretty close to a park, this place called uh, Ballast Point, and it has just a shoreline with rocks and just get a top water plug. I would just swing by there. I'd get up, or, like leave for work early, um, go out there and throw in top water this time of the morning, catching redfish, and then just go on to work and just put the rod in the, car, in the truck, obviously. Yeah. It's a whole lot of fun. And great, that's, that's great for wading. Yeah, for waders uh, or just living Fishing near a park. Land. Throw some top water early in the morning. That is definitely the, by far the easiest way to just get comfortable, start getting comfortable with, uh, with getting some top water strikes. Yep. And fish are feeding. Yeah, a lot of people are intimidated by it, by, by top water, and it's really, really not too bad. And we'll just show a retrieve too for anybody who is, who is new to it. I'll just cast out in ladyfish country. So the uh, the retrieve, right, just cast out and they just launch. Like a simple cast like that, just really launched. I like to do rod tip down. For me, that's just a little bit easier. Oh, I already have something hidden in it. So rod tip down, I'm just, just walking the dog and uh, and just doing little little small twitches like this. And so what I'm doing is you can see the, the rod tip is going down and I pop Ooh. it back up pretty quickly. <laughs> destroyed and, out there and what that'll do yeah we're both getting hit what that'll do is that'll have that lure going on back to forth it's called walking the dog see that lure is just calmly going back and forth left and right left and right and i'll pause it joe's back behind me getting slammed Ooh, oh that was a better fish there yeah that sounded good and so we'll pull this so if that was a trout it's probably still following joe's lure Going nice and slow. But you can see this; these uh, these lures are just doing a little walk the dog action. This, these fish just absolutely just freak out over it. Let's we'll see if I can steal Joe's fish. Oh, oh yeah, it was following. Oh yeah. Oh, that was a trout. Oh, so I got one on me. So again, I'm just out there, and, and basically, as far as hook sets, that might that might be laid fish. Ooh, oh, that sounded good there. As far as uh, hook sets, just keep going until you feel the fish. Yep. Oh, there we are, like right there. Oh, that is a lady fish. So let them mess with it a lot of times, especially if they're smaller fish, they're gonna miss it. And uh, and just don't set the hook until you feel the fish. Because if you set the hook on the first, when you hear or see that strike, which is like human nature, it's you're gonna your body's gonna try to do it. 
If you do it and they miss, now you're jerking that lure five feet away and now that fish can't find it, right? You just, you literally just pulled the fit, the lure away and from the And or you spooked him. Yeah, because nothing moves that quick. Let me get this guy over the boat. Oh, lady fish. So I'll get this guy Yeah, it sounds like there's some bigger fish out here. Yeah, that's, some of those sound like bigger trout. And the good news about the bigger fish, when they want something, they're usually not gonna miss it as much. So it does happen. But we've heard from some people saying, oh man, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing all these strikes, I'm just not getting the, getting the connection. And many times it's because those are super small. I'm talking like eight, nine inches of really, really small fish. And, and not to say that you don't wanna catch them, but you know, I, I'd personally rather catch a, a bigger fish. Be proud. Oops, something's falling. Oh, yeah, something's on you. Oh, a oh you gotta right love when they. Yes, uh, something's on me too. You can see him tracking it. Eat it. Yeah, so, this might kind of be our last little chance here. Yeah, Joel, let's see if we can get some of these strikes on film. So this. So right now I have something. I think it's a little small trout, and so I'm gonna try to entice. So now I'm just gonna make it a little bit more erratic. Where I slow it down. Oh, there. So I I slowed it down and I sped it up, and that's what triggered the strike. Now I'll get so close. Sometimes they'll hit right there, but yeah, as you saw there, like I slowed it down and then started speeding it up, and that's what triggered him to go ahead and and give it a whirl. So, let's, so we're just doing a, a small cast. So hopefully, Joel can find in the camera. They're already on it. <laughs> There's our ladyfish there. So I'm purposely going fast, and now that trout was somewhere right around in here. Let's see if we can get him to come back and take a swipe at it. Those ladyfish are ferocious out there. No doubt. I can only imagine how many are actually down there. No, but yeah, never, so it's good to right before you you, uh, you pull it out of the water, right, when you get about 10 feet from yourself, do a little pause and then speed it up real quick. And if there is a fish trailing it, that'll, oh. that'll often get it to go ahead and strike. And you can tell the difference between a trout and a lady. The ladyfish are just going in there and slashing, and just making all sorts of commotion, whereas the trout have more of a popping sound. Such a cool sound. I'm well, way out there yeah, in ladyfish country. I think we need to uh, push up and try to get up in the, the water. Uh, it's pretty low and it's starting to rise up and it should be deep enough now where we can start shooting into the back country and, See if we can't get a redfish and a snook to complete the slam. But yeah, this is one to do this podcast just to show, just a fun way to go out and have some topwater action. Whoa, oh, Ooh. nice. That's like a better fish. But so if you're if you're wanting to uh, to get in topwater lures and just not don't have the confidence yet, this is the way to do it. Get out super early, <laughs> go to this. the edge of a flat. Oh, those ladyfish. They're all you have like three of them following it. Go to the edge of a flat, go to an area where there's a lot of food, and, th and those predators are gonna be there, and they're gonna be going to town on your topwater plug. And go early. Yeah. And if you're intimidated by that in a boat or kayak, like you, like Luke said, start from shore. And that's such a great way to, to do it. When uh, Back when I lived in, in Tampa, lived right near the, uh, the, the main shipping channel and uh, go out there and caught some redfish uh, right there near the shipping channel early in the morning on top water. So much fun. Woohoo. Man, they're just all over this thing. Ooh, look at that jolt. Crazy lady fish. But, um, and if you're not a member, uh, what the heck are you waiting on? So I'm gonna grab you by the hand and show you where to fish every week because that's what we do. So a couple new things that have just happened. The Smart Fishing Spots app is now available in beta mode kind of the beta testers for our Insider members. And that is that all-in-one app. We've taken everything from, we got Wendy on, uh, on board. So we literally have the Wendy app basically overlaying on top of this, which means we have the wind, we have the radar, so you get to see all the storms and everything. We got the sonar, so you get to see the depth everywhere. And then this 3D imaging, it's basically an underwater, oh, look at that, Luke, they're just chasing you. An underwater view of your fishing areas. And, and that's inshore, that's nearshore, that's offshore, that's everywhere in America. 
and we got some really, really cool stuff coming here for the next round. And it will be an app that you'll see in the App Store. And once again, available to Insider members uh, only. And so we've got obviously the weather and the tides and literally just try to get everything that a fisherman uses on a day-to-day -day basis or even a yearly basis when they go fishing all into one really amazing app. So you have everything there at your fingertips and it's just gonna continually get better and better. And, um, and, and you'll understand pretty quickly, if, if you haven't seen it, why, uh, why a lot of people are swearing like, yeah, this is, this is the next big thing. This is game changing is, uh, is the quote that we've heard many times. So get in while you can before we raise the prices on that. And of course, if you're an Insider member already, you're locked in for life. That is our promise. It's the way we wish companies treated us uh, to kind of just, hey, reward the, reward the people who are, who are good to us and have been loyal for the longest. So um, once you're locked into a price, you're locked in forever, even if we double or triple over the, the next five years. So hope that helps. If you're not a member, go to salttron.com. If you are a member, thank you guys so much. I know a lot of our members listen to the podcast as well. And uh, we've got some really, really cool stuff coming on the tackle end and with the smart fishing spots. Uh, you, you've only seen just kind of the, the top of the iceberg, if you will. Um, wait till you see round two. It is pretty awesome. So thank you guys. Talk to you in the next episode. Peace, we out. See ya.